three men is back. Oh, I'm getting tired. Jay, boys, get it again. Oh my God, the man got messed up. This is a five out of freaking five. It is beat making time. Next week is E3 week. My album comes out next week. I have to live for it. Oh my God. This is your boy. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash the in front of. <laughs> and want to wish y'all a happy new year once again. Hope you have a good start to it already, even though it's barely early. So, yeah. Now, you're probably wondering, where's the gameplay? Well, I'm going to take a break from the gameplay this time around, and we're going to focus more on today's topic. And I had a serious debate on how i should do this because over the last four weeks i gave y'all a look back of the year 2016 now that is 2017 i was going to look ahead of what i anticipate to be great regarding to the movies and video games but then something else came to my mind as well and that is the nfl playoffs so as you all know, at around this time of the year, every year, I give you all my NFL predictions for, for each game, for each round, and ultimately who I think will win the Super Bowl. Now, and I was like, hmm, so I continue. I, obviously, I, I had to do both. I'm going to do both. But I was wondering, like, how screens them in on one video? And I'm like, no, I, I got to get them dead with the NFL. And then I'm like, okay, let me do two videos. And I'm like, no, that's too much to work. And I still got time. I can still push that towards next week and the week after. So here we are, focusing on the NFL playoffs. So with that said, let's get things going with the N, with not with the NFC, but with the AFC, actually. So with the deal here with this year's playoffs is this, before you jump into the AFC. On the AFC side, there are at least... One team that many people think will make it to the Super Bowl, but on the NFC side, it's around four. So, a lot of uncertainties regarding the NFC side. And not every matchup on the NFC side is set in stone. While in the AFC side, obviously there's some matchups where it's like, okay, we know this team going to win, and that team going to win, all, you know, everything or whatever. So there's more uncertainties in the NFC side than there are on the AFC side. That's why I want to get the AFC side out of the way first. So let's start off with the 3-6 matchup. The Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the Miami Dolphins. Yes, the Miami Dolphins are back in the playoffs, but it won't last. So yeah, Pittsburgh should win this one at home. No problem, man. And they will move on to take on the Kansas City Chiefs. Because, you know, as you can see on the bottom... Above printableteamschedules.com, it says highest remaining seed play the lowest remaining seed in the division round. And seeing how from the wild card round, you can't get any higher than the three seed, with me saying Pittsburgh moving on, they're going to play against the Kansas City Chiefs, while the Patriots will take on whoever win, I think will win between the Houston Texans and the Oakland Raiders, who will be the lowest seed. And that one is a tough one to pick because... They both have quarterback issues. Now, in Oakland case, their quarterback, Derek Carr, who was an MVP, a serious MVP candidate, hurt his leg and is done for the year. Now, on the other side, there was issues regarding their quarterback, um, Brock Osweiler. But he's going to be the starter because he wasn't even the starter over Savage. I think that was his name. But um, it has been confirmed, I think, today, Tuesday, where I was making, um, before I made this video, that Brock Osweiler was going to be the quarterback. Now, even though Oakland on paper had still have the better team, but ever since the quarterback went down, they have free fall because they was in that number two spot before they free fall and lost it to division rivals Kansas City. And again, on paper, Oakland's the better team, and I would prefer to see Oakland advance than Houston because I never really like Houston. I never really like Texas teams when it comes to football. So because the media have constantly been on their dicks for a number of years about, oh, they're going into the Super Bowl. And I'm like, well, y'all shut up. But anywho, I had to be realistic here. And even though, again, Oakland's the better team on paper, but their recent slump says otherwise. And I have to go with the Houston Texans, unfortunately. So, yeah, that sets up our division around. Let's continue on from there. Now, Houston against the Patriots, again, I mentioned this earlier, 
it is pretty much a foregone conclusion as far as who going to the AFC Conference Championship game. Doesn't matter who they play. And in this case, the Patriots are going to move on. Okay, let's be real. The only team that can get the Patriots problems are the Steelers. And there's no way the Steelers were going to play the Patriots in the second round because of the current playoff format. So the other three teams had a shot. And it doesn't matter which one of those three teams play the Patriots in the divisional round because the Patriots was going to win it no matter what and move on. So in this case, they will play against Houston. And I see the Patriots beating Houston. And because the game is in Foxborough, the Patriots should have no problem beating Houston big. Now, the other division round matchup will be more interesting. We got the Steelers going on the road against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, as I mentioned, while the Oakland Raiders have went on a slump and lost the number two seed, the Chiefs has been on a rise and took the number two seed in the division from Oakland. So now they get to play the Pittsburgh Steelers, who again have one of, if not the best offense in all of football. So this is going to be a very good matchup. And actually, this is one I really want to watch. So, and like I said, the Kansas City Chiefs being on a, on a rise, they are at home as well. But when I say best offense in football, that needs to be taken seriously. And I'm going to take that very seriously. And I got the Steelers in a tough battle defeating the Kansas City Chiefs on the roll, landed them in the AFC Conference Championship game. And this is, according to ESPN.com, the matchup that the Patriots want to avoid. In fact, in the Patriots will rather face the Kansas City Chiefs, according to ESPN, rather than the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, let me read this real quick. The Patriots handed the Steelers a 27-16 defeat in Pittsburgh earlier this season. But that was with Ben Roethlisberger on the sideline and Laundry Jones starting at quarterback. If Ben gets hurt again, the story changes. But I'll be worried about the Patriots' pass defense holding up against Antonio Brown and company. The Patriots are 25th in pass defense. And pass defense DVOA, wherever that is, heading into Monday night's matchup with the Ravens. So this was a few weeks back, obviously. Posting a below average DVOA against receivers at every single position. It's always dangerous to bet against Tom Brady in the playoffs, but this will also be a bad matchup in some ways for the New England's offense. The Steelers have the league's best red zone defense, allowing just 3.7 points per trip inside the 20. The Patriots were great inside the red zone in week 7, scoring three times in three trips. But that was with the devastating matchup threat of Rob Gronkowski, who was done for the year. Keep that in mind. There's no way around it. His absence fundamentally changes what New England can do in the red zone, and it's an area where Pittsburgh already excels. It remains to be seen whether a clearly injured Martelli, uh, Martellius, Bell, uh, Martellius Bennett will be able to make up for Gronk's absence in the red zone and kicking field goals in a game against Ben in this offense seemed dangerous, which is true. So, who do I think would go to the Super Bowl? Now, early in the year, I said that the Super Bowl matchup would be New England against the Seattle Seahawks, and I'm sticking with the AFC side with my pick, meaning I still see Tom Brady at home in Foxborough leading the Patriots over Big Ben and the Pittsburgh Steelers and earn another trip to the Super Bowl. Now, the NFC side is really crazy. It is, it's really, really crazy because none of these games are for sure. Like, this, it's, none of them is a done deal. Some may say, wait a minute, what about that one? No, none of them are. None of them are. So let's get things going with the 4-5 matchup, switching it up. The Packers barely win the division going up against the New York Giants, the fifth seed. Now, this is an interesting matchup because the Packers won six straight ever since, what's his name? Aaron Rodgers made that whole, oh, we're going to run the table crap. And once again, it actually came true. But now they're facing a team who is also hot in the form of the Giants. And every time we see the Giants make the playoffs, one, it's always been a low seed, I think. And two, they always make this miraculous one towards the Super Bowl and winning it against the Patriots, who, if you recall, 
I said, are going to the Super Bowl. So now you got two hot teams squaring off against each other, which is a good thing for the rest of the league because one of them will be eliminated. But the question is, who? And Ben, not Ben, but Aaron Rodgers, if he won MVP this year, I would not get mad. I would not get angry. I would not detest that reason or that pick because he deserves it. So does um, Matt Ryan. So does the injured Derek Carr. So does Tom Brady. And I ain't going to say anything about the two Dallas rookies. But anywho, and nor um, Matthew Stafford. But anywho, we're going into this game. Again, it's going to be a tough one to call because both these teams are, again, hot. So, who would you pick? Well, I'm going with the team because I've seen the, uh, the Packers in action recently, obviously, but not in person, though. But uh, they still got flaws. Their defense, their secondary are banged up and just bruised up. And they're going against an offense that have Eli Manning. And their talented receivers. Now, on the flip side, you got Aaron Rodgers on offense, who is no joke. But at the same time, the Giants' defense is no joke. So, it's like, hmm, Aaron Rodgers against the Giants' defense. That's a stalemate. That's a draw. The Packers' defense against Eli Manning and their receivers, well, not so much. That's in favor of the Giants. Therefore, in a close game on the road, I got the Giants knocking off the Packers. Now, the other matchup is also interesting because, well, for me anyway, because you got the Seattle Seahawks hosting my Detroit Lions. Now, everybody already said, oh, this is going to be a blowout. Oh, Seattle going to win this one, blah, blah, blah. But Seattle has been slumping as of yet, as of yet, as of um, late. Yes, they won their last game, but they did not look good doing it. In the game before that, in the game that they should have won, they lost it. And that was against the Cardinals. And they was at home. So, I, they slumping. They've been slumping for a number of weeks now. And here you got Detroit. Yeah, they kind of been slumping too. But they kind of look good against Green Bay before, obviously, they kind of self-destructed to some degree. And they got their defenders back. And they realize that this is the playoffs. And that they're going on the road against a team who have many experience in the playoffs and won the Super Bowl. So the level of intensity and urgency for the Lions will be at an all time high. And I think that will propel them. Yes, you hear me correctly. That will propel them on the road in prime time in Seattle over the Seahawks. So, yes, I got the Detroit Lions in a close game, winning in Seattle, under them another trip back in Dallas. Hmm. Against the Cowboys. And we saw, now granted, when the Detroit got owned in the second half, they did not have their top defenders. They were missing some defenders. They still missing their leading running back in Theo Riddick. I'm not even sure he's gonna come back. But um their backup running back Zimmer has been holding down the fourth just fine, in my opinion. And much as I want to say, oh, Detroit gonna get the revenge and talk about how it's hard to defeat the same team twice, and but yet at the same time. The Giants did it against the Cowboys this year. So why couldn't the Cowboys do it against the Lions in the same building two times within, what, four weeks? So as much as I want to say, oh, Detroit going to win and go to the NFC Conference Championship game, uh, I, I just can't. I, I really can't. It, it's kind of, uh, like they can stop Ezekiel Elliott. The problem is, the passing game. Now, yes, the, the defensive backs will be bad. And another problem is Detroit's offense. Detroit's offense got to do a better job of putting up points on the board. Yes, they did so earlier in the game in the first half. But then they, again, self-destructed in the second half. And they couldn't maintain. And they put the defense in a bad spot where they couldn't hold the Cowboys back any further. So, I have to go with the Cowboys, unfortunately, going to the NFC Conference Championship game. Moving on, the Giants... On the road against the Falcons. Now, the Falcons are a team that everybody said, oh, they're underrated. You should not uh, overlook them, things of that nature. Now, let me be clear real quick. Let me be clear real quick. I like the Falcons going back to the Michael Vick um, era. And even when Matt Ryan first came in his earlier years with the Falcons, when they were actually winning, I liked them then. 
Uh, like not as a terms that oh they could win the Super Bowl. I Me mean, like I was somewhere of a fan of the Falcons. Cause I like the colors and they had that a bit of a swag to them that I like, and they had that cool factor that I like, especially during the Michael Vick era, especially during that time. But again, they're going against the Red Hot Giants, who are back in the playoffs, and yeah, there's nothing much for me to say. I ain't say this is going to be a blowout win for the Giants. But this is going to be a close one, and I think the Giants will win again under themselves a trip back to the NFC Conference Championship game where they will play for the third time this year, the Dallas Cowboys. Now, in that matchup, I'm going to go back to, once again, that ESPN article about teams that these teams to avoid in the NFL. So, And, and, you, and, guess, and guess who they said the Cowboys to avoid? The New York Giants. So let me read this one. Let's start with the obvious one. The Giants had wait a minute. The Giants beat the Cowboys on Sunday night again. This was a few weeks back. But it was exactly the same way they put it off in week one. During the opener, they shut down Ezekiel Elliott, held up in the red zone, and protected Eli Manning. On Sunday night, Ezekiel Elliott ran for 107 yards on 24 carries, and Manning spent most of the night running for his life, turning the ball over three times, and nearly tossing in a couple of more picks for good measure. Instead, the Giants shut down the Dallas passing attack, held the Cowboys to a ridiculous 1 of 15 on third down, and came away with the game's biggest play to seal a narrow victory. Ben McAdoo also managed the game better than his counterpart, with Jason Garrett mismanaging the clock just before halftime to end up with a field goal attempt that was narrowly out of Dan Bailey's range and punting on a 4th and 1 late in the 4th quarter with the league's best offensive line and running back. Are the Cowboys doomed against the Giants? Of course not. But this is still a matchup that plays to New York's relative strengths. They're quite good on defense, one that played without Jason Pierre-Paul on Sunday night, and don't allow many big ones while the Cowboys don't have anybody who can cover Beckham and don't have the sort of defensive line that can truly take over a game. This was one of their better performances of the year in terms of pressuring Manning, but it wasn't a sort of Vikings-esque game in which you were you wonder whether Eli is going to write a detailed essay on the texture of the MetLife Stadium grass. The good news, if you're a Cowboys fan, I suppose, is that losing twice to the same team is hardly a guarantee that a third loss is coming in the postseason. I went back through the 1990 season and identified every team a team swept an opponent in the regular season and then played them a third time in the playoffs. Those teams were 11-5 in the postseason when they played a third time, which is a good sign for Giants fans, but hardly a guarantee. Fans of both organizations may remember the 2007 campaign when a Tony Romo-led Cowboy team beat the Giants in the opener and again in Week 10. The Giants subsequently traveled to Dallas in the divisional round and won 21-17 and route to their Super Bowl win over the Patriots. So what does all that mean? Cowboys, you have no shot. Giants back to the Super Bowl. That's what I got. So, for the third time the Giants been in the postseason, the Giants face the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And unlike the first two encounters, really, I think New England should have won that one Super Bowl game against the Giants and had a completely perfect year. This time, the third time would be the charm for the Patriots. I got Tom Brady winning Super Bowl MVP and the Patriots still winning the Super Bowl. The same pick I had before the season started, Patriots winning Super Bowl. I'm sticking with it here. Patriots win the Super Bowl. So, yeah, there you go with that, man. Those are my NFL picks. Y'all know who this is. This is the new Jay Gatsby, a.k.a. the new Stephen A. Smith. And before I sign up, I will update my picks as the weeks go on, in case um, one of my picks are wrong or if new development pops up, like, oh, an injured player returns or somebody else get injured during the playoffs or doing practice or whatever. So I may do an updated version uh, at the beginning of every one of my Wednesday videos leading up to the Super Bowl. So, yeah, man, I'm just here saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah. Number five, The Legend of Tarzan. Now, I was conflicted as far as where to put this one because Tarzan was really, really, really good. And this one came out April uh, the 15th, rather. And this was not in my top 10 movies I wanted to see. 
But yeah, it finished in my top five movies of the year, which is pretty funny. And it was really good. It wasn't like they was retelling the whole Tarzan story, but you know, uh, Cut, what's his name? The Hunter. 